An Idaho man who spent half his life in prison for a crime he didn't commit is suing for compensation for the time he spent behind bars. Christopher Tapp was arrested in 1997 for the rape and murder of Idaho Falls teenager Angie Dodge. He was eventually released from prison in 2017 and exonerated earlier this year. But after spending 20 years behind bars, Tapp is now suing the police department that put him there. Our Misty Inglet has been looking more into this lawsuit this afternoon. Misty? Well, Gretchen, Idaho is one of 15 states that currently does not offer compensation for people who have been wrongfully convicted. So Tap is taking his case to the courts. So right now as I stand in front of you, I'm convicted of murder. For 20 years, the name Christopher Tap was synonymous with the word murder. He spent two decades behind bars for a crime he did not commit. 18-year-old Angie Dodge was raped and murdered in her Idaho Falls apartment in 1996. Tapp was arrested for the crime in 97 and found guilty by a jury one year later. During the investigation, Tapp confessed to the crime but later claimed it was coerced. At the time, a witness also said she heard Tapp talking about the murder. She too insisted later on that statement was again coerced by police. After multiple appeals and post-conviction relief requests, Tapp was released from prison in 2017 and credited with time served. Then, in May 2019, advanced DNA testing led to the arrest of Caldwell resident Brian Lee Drips, who lived across the street from Dodge at the time of her death. He did confess, and Tapp was exonerated. Now, Tapp is suing for compensation. This tort claim filed by Tapp names the Idaho Falls Police Department as well as several individual officers and detectives who worked the case. Tapp is suing on the grounds that his first, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth, and fourteenth amendment rights were violated. Among other things, the claim seeks damages for false arrest and imprisonment, malicious prosecution, defamation and libel, negligence, and emotional harm and distress. It alleges Tapp's confession was coerced through tactics like, quote, psychological manipulation, threats, and false promises, end quote. According to the National Registry of Exonerations, more than 2,500 people have been exonerated since 1989. An NRE study also found that between 2005 and 2009, nearly half of exonerees obtained compensation. In an interview with KTVB earlier this year, Tapp said he was grateful to have his name cleared and he hopes his story can be an example. I truly hope that, you know, through all this, that it doesn't ever happen again. That the police, you know, the criminal justice system or anybody else doesn't get so tunnel vision and closed minded and just so pinpoint on one thing and continue to look. Because look, 23 years later, they were actually able to solve the crime. And I did speak with former Idaho Attorney General and Lieutenant Governor of Idaho, Dave Leroy, over the phone this afternoon. I asked him if he felt Tap had a strong case here, and he said this is, quote, not a cookie cutter case. There's a lot to consider. But he did add that, generally speaking, police officers have a lot of protections from lawsuits as long as they acted with lawful intent. And Gretchen, no word yet on how much Tap intends to sue for. All right, thanks, Misty. And the city of Idaho Falls did confirm it received the notice of a lawsuit. A full statement from them is posted. Just look for this story on our website at ktbb.com.